Hello, this is Teddy Tedesi, an IT educator from the DMV area. Today, we're going to embark on an enlightening journey through the labyrinth of SQL Server configuration. We'll be exploring best practices and providing practical guidelines for common configurations. From Mac server memory to backup compression default, we'll cover it all. So, if you're looking to optimize your SQL Server environment, you're in the right place. Stay tuned as we delve into the configuration settings and their best practices. First off, we will look into the memory settings, max and min server memory. The max server memory setting is a crucial knob to turn. It should usually be set at 70 to 80% of your total server RAM for dedicated SQL server instances. For instance, if you're working with a server that has 16 gigabytes of RAM, you should set SQL server to use between 11.2 and 12.8 gigabytes. On the other hand, we have the min server memory. Typically, this is set to zero. However, in high performance environments, you might want to ensure SQL server retains a minimum amount of memory. Here you could dial in a value like two to four gigabytes. Remember these settings are not set in stone, but are rather general guidelines. They might need adjustment based on your specific needs and the performance characteristics of your SQL server environment. That sums up our memory settings. Let's move on to the next. Now we'll discuss tempdb size and files. TempDB is an essential part of SQL Server. It's a workspace for holding temporary objects or intermediate result sets. So getting the size and file configuration right is crucial for overall performance. The initial size of TempDB should be large enough to prevent frequent auto growth. Picture it like this. If you're setting up a room for a party, you'd want to make it big enough from the start, rather than having to knock down walls mid-celebration. You might start with an initial size of 8 gigabytes with an auto growth setting of 512 megabytes. As for tempdb files, a good rule of thumb is to create one file per four logical processors. So on a 16 core server, you typically have four tempdb files. With that, we have configured our tempdb. Next, we'll talk about auto growth. Let's now focus on database auto growth and model database growth settings. When it comes to database auto growth, it's wise to set fixed megabyte growth rather than a percentage. Let's say you've got a data file, consider setting its growth at 512 megabytes and for log files, 128 megabytes is a good starting point. Now let's move on to model database growth settings. These settings act as a template for any new databases you create. It's a good practice to set data file growth at 256 megabytes and log file growth at 128 megabytes. Remember, these are just general guidelines. The specific needs and performance characteristics of your SQL server environment may require adjustments. Always monitor the performance impact after making changes to configurations. And that's how you configure auto growth and model database growth settings. Let's move on to the final set of configurations. In this final segment, we'll discuss some advanced settings. Let's start with max degree of parallelism or max stop. This is generally set to half the number of logical processors, up to a maximum of 8. For example, on a server with 16 cores, you would set max stop to 8. Next up is the cost threshold for parallelism. By default, this is set at 5, but it's a good idea to increase this value to something like 50. This helps to prevent expensive query plans from going parallel on trivial queries, improving your server's overall performance. Moving on to the query store size, it's recommended to limit the maximum size to about 10% of the size of the corresponding database. This prevents excessive storage use, keeping your system running smoothly. Lastly, we have the backup compression default setting. Enabling this can significantly reduce backup size, typically by 50 to 70%. It's an easy way to save on storage without sacrificing data security. Remember, these are just guidelines. Your specific needs and performance characteristics may require adjustments. Always monitor the performance impact after making changes to configurations. Well, that wraps up our discussion on SQL Server Configuration Best Practice. Remember these are just guidelines and fine-tuning might be required depending on your specific needs.